everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we are going on to the next part of a Realm Reborn questline. So we made it back to Gridania after we found the Enterprise. So the next quest is going to be called Into the Eye of the Storm. Sid appears to be deep in thought. calms me to look at her. It's as though I've been reunited with a part of me I never knew was missing. Hardly surprising, you did design and build her. I bear good news. The Seed Seers have granted our request to house the Enterprise. We may take as long as we require to repair her. Of course, it would be frank folly to take one moment more than we require. Garuda, at least we forget, grows stronger by the hour. If we are to have any hope of wrestling the blighted realm from her talons, it must be needs soon. Though I am no expert on the workings of airships, it seems plain to me that the Enterprise suffered much from her time in the wilderness. Am I not correct, Sid? You are. Frankly, it's a miracle she carried us this far. As you know, the Howling Eye is encircled by a raging tempest, a beat to turn proud trees to matchwood. Our battle will end before it begins if the Enterprise cannot weather the storm. Given time, I believe I can fully repair her. But if this tempest is as fearsome as you say, even that may not be good enough. <sighs> Confound it, there must be a way. A way to brave the fury of the elements. The elements. But of course, that's it! We work upon the element itself, using the power of a corrupted crystal. We could clear a path through the storm and spare the Enterprise a battery. I see. You propose to utilize the properties of a crystal to alter the elemental aspect of the barrier. It seems so childlessly simple in retrospect. Though mayhap not to you, Claire. We speak of the manifestations of over-aspected ether that can be found throughout Eorzea. Since the calamity disrupted the land's etheric currents, such crystals have become comparatively commonplace which has been a cause of great woe as they are known to warp etheric energies, including those of living organisms. The point is, we could theoretically use a corrupted crystal to convert the wind aspect of ether comprising Garuda's barrier into ether of another aspect, one she cannot control. With certain modifications, the Enterprise could be able to deliver us to the Howling Eye in comfort, however hard Garuda blows. We are getting ahead of ourselves. All this rests upon our ability to procure a crystal with the necessary properties. Have you any idea where we might acquire one? No, but I know a man who might, a scholar by the name of Lambertinet, who resides in Camp Drybone. Strange as it may sound, I met him during my time at the church. Well, Marquess met him, I suppose. Whether out of pity or for want of a more willing listener, he would talk to me for hours at a time about his etheric studies, corrupted crystals being his pet subject. It was a result of these conversations that poor Marquis was observed to possess an uncommon knack for theoretical science. Claire, I need you to return to Thanalyn and seek out the scholar. Set and I will set about repairing the Enterprise in your absence. Oh sure, leave the hard work to us. When I look at her, I feel as though I've come home. I can think of no other way to express it. And I see the Enterprise is now missing! There it goes! Why do you tarry, Claire? Our work is not yet finished. We must press onward until the Harpy Queen lies broken at our feet. Alright, let's head on out to Camp Drybone. 
Well, this is going to be sending us on another long series of errands, I can predict. Since they're going to be needing all that time to repair the Enterprise. Oh, this is not going to be fun, is it? Well, yes, I am Professor Lambertinet. Beg pardon, you wish to hear about my research on corrupted crystals? Truly? Well, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to discuss my work with a fellow woman of science. Okay, all due precaution. Professor Lambertinet is eager to tell you anything and everything of corrupted crystals. Ah, so rare is it to find fellow intellects in this region. It is even rarer to find one capable of comprehending the nature of corrupted crystals. Come to think of it, there was another, a hermit to whom the church had given sanctuary. Curious fellow. Unsociable, rather daft at first impression, yet possessed an amazing affinity towards the scientific pursuits. But to the matter at hand, did you say that you wish not to conduct field observations but to harvest a corrupted crystal? Egads, woman! At least take the necessary precautions so that you do not suffer from exposure to its harmful energies. I'm beginning to wonder if you have sufficient qualifications to handle such hazardous materials. Still, your ignorance is somehow endearing. If you bring me a suitable vessel, say a common clay pot, I shall coat it with a chemical sealant of my own design. Simply store the crystal you seek within this pot to protect yourself from its deleterious effects. Hmm? Where might you find a clay pot? Well, I'm hardly a merchant, but surely some fellow at the Golden Bazaar has some for sale. You think that we would need something a little bit stronger than a clay pot, but hey. So, the Golden Bazaar is not far from here, right up this way, though it's not very golden anymore. But nowadays, I don't reckon that people would be using its name other than out of irony. Yeah, let's look at this place, it's so sad. Excuse me. You get a pot. You get a pot. Everyone gets a pot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get a bit carried away when disposing of old merchandise. Any road, take my pot, please. And there's no other way that could possibly mean anything else. At least it was short. Still, it's just a pain having to run everywhere. I can see why they're modifying the main scenario quest line to make it a little bit easier for people. Fascinating. Even accounting for the unusually strong ethereal currents in this region, the crystalline formations are... Oh, you returned! Any luck finding a pot like I suggested? A simple vessel that will most likely last longer than its maker. Unless you drop it. Well, this is indeed an unremarkable piece of rubbish. But for our purposes, it shall suffice. Sealed with science, Professor Lambertinet is about to show you something you will never forget. 
with a liberal application of my alchemical sealant, this sorry excuse for earthenware will be reborn as a corrupted crystal containment device. Now observe as this scholar skillfully, whoa, almost dropped that, skillfully coats the interior of this pot just so. There, it's finished. You no longer need fear of the crystal's transformative energies. Though I suppose you will be bombarded with its energies until you place it within the vessel. Well, perhaps it shall motivate you to work quickly. In any case, I would now have you take the warded pot to Hayashako, a student of mine monitoring the flow of ether at the high bridge. Explain to him your quest and he shall instruct you in the finer points of crystal harvesting. Come, listen closely. Can you hear that beating? It is the flow of ether, the very pulse of the land. Truly, Eorzea is a realm of endless wonders. Every day my heart is set aflutter with a new discovery. I think we all know that feeling. Alright, so thankfully the high bridge isn't too far from here. About the same distance as the Golden Bazaar. Should be right over here. There it is. times must I be made to explain myself? I am not contemplating suicide, you imbecile. I have chosen this precise position to perform scientific measurements. Simple clay pot that has been treated on the inside with a special alchemical ciliate. What have we here? A containment vessel? Why, this is the handiwork of Professor Lambertinet. You thieving knave, I shall call for the... Oh, made especially for you by the man himself. Then you must have sought me out per his instruction. Which means he believes me experienced enough to expound upon his explanations! At last, the recognition I so rightfully deserve! With the utmost care, Hayashako is trying very hard to contain his excitement and is failing. Oh, Frab just day, Kalu Kale, that I should be chosen to guide this woman! Yes, I, Hayashako, great as the Professor Lambertinet's pupils, shall see that you successfully quarry your quarry. Your timing is impeccable, in fact, for I was just preparing to procure corrupted crystals from the burning wall for my personal research. The devastating destruction caused by the calamity has blessed us with a bounty of sublime specimens. But something tells me that not but a perfect piece will satisfy your high standards, in which case you must needs descend to the deepest depths, amidst the flowering waters and the murderous mirror nights, like the most fantastic formation I have found thus far. Take this highly advanced research search tool and use it to separate a small fragment from the large cluster. Place it within the warded pot and bear it back to me for inspection. The path which leads from Burgundy Falls to the base of the Burning Wall is treacherous and terrifying, but advance with appropriate caution and you shall surely survive. Hmm. He does not sound so confident, but hey, we'll do what he says. Okay... So I know there are two different ways of getting down this way. This one's probably the easiest.
And I will say, it is pretty. I mean, despite the fact that this crystal is supposed to be very dangerous, it's gorgeous around here. So all of this is just due to the after effects of Dalamud and like when pieces broke off and a shard landed here. It just corrupted the land, I suppose, and caused like these giant formations of crystals. Oh, it should be around here. Do I have to go any bit deeper? I mean, it's definitely below us if that's the case. Can't jump down, so. There's another way. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's down this way. Okay, there we go. It would not be a lie to say that this sledgehammer was made for harvesting corrupted crystals. Sure it was. Right, so we just need to break off the piece. And we use the warded pots, and then we can get out of here. Oh, it is so pretty here. You know, it's going to be really cool once we learn to fly in this area, too. Because <laughs> then we don't need to worry about getting lost, like, on these countless overlapping slopes. Oh, it's going to make getting around here so much easier. Alright, we're back. I see you come galumping back. Have you the crystal then? Yep, yeah, this warded pot contains a corrupted crystal. What a prodigiously large and lovely crystal. Professor Lambertinet will doubtless chortle with joy when you present it to him in person. Oh, and upon your return, do you remind to recount how I helped you with your harvesting? Sure, we'll tell him that you were the one who provided us a sledgehammer and told us to go get it. I highly doubt that's going to be it, though.
My keen scholar sense tells me you've obtained a corrupted crystal. Am I right? Well, what other reason would we have for coming back? If you would grant me a moment to examine the crystal. Ah, it is as you desired. A corrupted crystal overflowing with wind-aspected ether. Mmm, remind me, for what purpose did you intend to use this crystal again? What? To breach a barrier comprised of wind-aspected ether? Oh dear, that may prove problematic, as this crystal would only serve to strengthen the barrier. I suppose I am at fault for not inquiring as to your objectives from the start. Had I known your intent, I would never have sent you to Hayashako. But what is science if not trial and error? And can you truly say that this failure has taught you nothing? Think, woman. You now understand the methods necessary to safely collect a corrupted crystal. You will doubtless have no difficulty doing so once more. What's more, the crystal you collected can serve as an invaluable resource for the etheric studies conducted by the students of Baldessian. You've heard of them? Well, I don't mean to boast, but I have a professional relationship with the organization. Not as equals, of course. I would never be so bold as to claim that level of expertise. Are you alright? Your eyes seem to have glazed over for a moment. Anyway, I shall keep you from your task. You still a corrupted crystal to find. Okay, well, we have a promised bank prospect. Professor Lambertine knows where you might find the crystal you seek. Hopefully. Corrupted crystals of sufficient size and strength are not all that common, I fear. Fortunately, one of my other students, Sania, claims to have discovered another promising site in Eastern Lenotia. Wait, that's not correct. Eastern Lenotia was where she was nearly killed when wandering too close to an imperial chasm. <laughs> now that made for an amusing acidote. It was Western Lenotia, a pharaoh Sirius in the Isles of Umbra, to be precise. I can't recall her exact reasoning, something to do with one of Dalamud's talents or such nonsense. What I can say for certain is that she is still in Aleport, attempting to gain access to the Isles. Why not travel there and see if Sinia's inquiries bear fruit? If you can look past the crass and violent ways of the local pirates, you might find your time there to be quite pleasurable. Oh, and do not forget to take your makeshift warded pot. At least she think you unprepared for the task. Alright, so let's head over to Western Lenotia now and hope that she has more information than the last guy. Eh? Corrupted crystals? Madam, I have no interest in being the butt of your jokes, so if you know other reasons for addressing me, kindly leave me be. Well, I'll be damned. Professor Lambertine did send you. Beg your pardon, it seems we got off on the wrong foot. I'm Sunia, greatest of the professor's pupils, which is doubtless why he bid you seek me out. Indeed, I am an accomplished scholar with an extensive background in... <sighs> oh gods, just listen to me prattle on and on. I must have given this introduction a dozen times by now. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to see that she's just cutting straight to the point. Okay, so it's probably not pirates. Zania is frustrated with the progress of her research. As I told the professor in my many messages, I believe the area surrounding Pharaoh Sirius is replete with corrupted crystals of exceptional strain. Unfortunately, I've yet to test my hypothesis, as all access to the Isles of Umbra is prohibited at present for reasons unknown to me. You see, my attempts to acquire this information are often met with annoyance and disdain. It's rather puzzling since I always take the time to explain my motivations in great detail to the subjects of them questioning. Mayhap you will have better luck wrestling information from these yellow jackets. I've all but given up at this point.
Oh, there we go. Ah, you startled me. Don't you know better than to sneak up on a person at a time like this, what with all this rap just gossip of spirits and specters haunting the Isles of Umbra? Just because I know it's nonsense doesn't make it any less frightening. Hmm, I don't think that you think it's all nonsense then. Yeah, keen on traveling to the Isles of Umbra. Bloody hell's last, are you drunk or just crazy? Ain't nothing there but death, death, and more death. Hmm. Not much to go on. Seems to be all over the place here. And I can't jump down there. There we go. The Isles of Umbra. What interest have you in that God's forsaken place? Ever since we were forced to abandon Pharaoh Sirius, the islands have become not more than a graveyard for ships unable to navigate the shores, and a purgatory for the souls dragged down to the depths with them. So in case you don't know, Pharaoh Sirius is that lighthouse that we've been seeing in the distance. The one that has like that giant like splatting of crystal like growing right out of it. I'm sure that we'll get a better look at it once we get closer. Ah, Claire, you've returned. Tell me of your findings. <laughs> really? Infested with the undead, you say? That, that is a very, very interesting development. Excuse me for a moment while I gather my thoughts. So I'm guessing she's not the brave swords. Hey, representing the representative. Nina seems to have regained her composure. Worry not, my friend. I've given your findings some thought, and I've concluded that this talk of spirits is not more than local folklore. As for why all the travel to the Isles of Umbra is restricted, well, mayhap it's considered too dangerous owing to the abandonment of Pharaoh Sirius. Yes, well, anyway, while you were questioning those yellow jackets, I paid a visit to the local pub, since even an esteemed scholar like myself enjoys dulling her wits on occasion. It was there that I heard tell of a man named Skyfrim, who was recently detained after returning from, wait for it, the Isles of Umbra. This is the first I've heard of someone actually traveling to and from there, so I'm curious as to how he obtained permission. Mind having a chat with him in my stead? He was arrested after all, so I'm somewhat resistant to approach him myself. I have to go back. She calls to me. Sings to me. Oh, tell Mimoda I'm sorry. Give him this. He was... he was right. Or... or could you release me? Yes, yes, release me. I will go and tell her. Let me... let me go to her. Okay, that's not creepy at all. And darn it, I hate when my controller dies like that.
What does Sky Frame have to say? Hmm, that's not terribly helpful. I couldn't care less how much he misses his favorite bar wench, but what was that about a man named Mimi Moda? Wait, I know that name! That's the bastard who grabbed my arse the other day at the pub! Well, if you want to give him that feather, be my guest. I'm not going anywhere near him and his wandering hands. As a Lala fell, I'm surprised he can even reach that high. Another initiate, are ye? No? Then what are ye? Speak up, Missy, I can't hear ye. This brilliant feather reflects light as if it were actually made of gold. <gasps> Bugger me, is that what I think it is? Nah, couldn't be. You found this, you say? Where'd you say you found it? Skyfriend, you say? was hoping to have a word with the lad, but it sounds like there's not left Twisk's ears. He was supposed to help patch up Pharaoh serious he was. Company sent me to supervise the lot of them. Weren't getting work done on their own, see? Half of them walked off, half of them ran off, and half of them up and vanished. What's that? You've been looking for passage to the Isles of Umbra? Why didn't you say so? I've been thinking of dispatching someone to take a look on behalf of old Mimimoda. Tell him how the land lies. Ain't nobody been interested till you came a-calling. Whole port's up in arms about spirits and so forth. If I had the gill, I'd hire some salt swords and let them sort it out. But you'll do in a pinch, you know. Show this parchment to the skipper and he'll see you up there and back. So you went and had a word with Mimi Oda. I hope the valuable time you saw fit to waste amount to something. Slip a parchment granting you crossing to the Isles of Umbra. You mean that disgusting creature was Skyfriran's superior? I find that hard to believe, but this rite of passage does appear to be genuine, so it must be true. I must say, it is a relief to work with such an industrious woman as you. I look forward to hearing of the discoveries you make on the Isles of Umbra. Without me. What? Oh no, you're coming too, buddy. You're the only one here who can help me with these corrupted crystal business. The reluctant researcher and Sienna has no desire to journey to the Isles of Umbra. <sighs> fine, fine. I fail to see the justification for dragging me along on your journey. If you insist, I will go as well. But twelve is my witness. If you leave me behind to be devoured by some horrid abomination, I, I shall come back to haunt you. I think I can live with that. Ha! Take me to the Isles of Umbra, she bids. As if it's as simple as... Oh, I see, you gotta write a passage. Alright then, climb aboard. <laughs> this doesn't seem all that bad. I'm not saying I like to build a summer home here, but... Oh, the hell's with this! Here, take your pot and go on without me! You've harvested corrupted crystals before, right? So it isn't as though you require my assistance. Speak to the man guarding the gate. I'm sure he'll let you in. Now, if you please excuse me. Ah, oh, you big baby. You've been trying to get to this place for a long time now, and now that you're here, you want to run away? 
Beg your pardon, madam, but how did you come here? Access to this island is currently restricted. An old pot? I'm not sure I follow. Oh, I see. You wish to harvest a corrupted crystal. Sorry, friend, but you may have to return empty-handed. Okay. Sweet somethings. Diet has a simple proposal for you. The writ Master Mimi Oda gave you may grant you access to the island, but only authorized personnel may proceed past this point. Why, you ask? Look up and see for yourself. When that giant mass of crystal struck the lighthouse, it caused severe damage to both the structure of the machinery within that once powered the beacon. Aye, uh, contrary to what the small folk would have you believe, the fires of Pharaoh Sirius were not the product of a major's thaumaturgy or a colossal arcane bomb, but an elaborate contraption fueled by etheric energy. Repairs are still ongoing, but it's anyone's guess when they'll be complete. What's worse, all work has ceased since rumors of the walking dead drove off our entire crew. Now that those rumors are incorrect, I've observed the fiends from a distance at the ship graveyard to the south. What draws them to our shores is still a mystery, though. I'll make you a deal, Claire. Help me unravel this mystery, and I'll bring you your corrupted crystal. In fact, I shall begin searching for one that satisfies your requirements. As for where to begin your inquiries to the situation, it so happens that a party of three adventurers came ashore not long ago, seeking to salvage valuable trinkets at the ship graveyard. I'd be surprised if they knew nothing of the undead infestation, so it might behoove you to question them. It's all there for the taking. Five bleeding years worth of wrecks and their cargo. If those queer dead things in that voice. Actually, the voice was quite nice. God's that voice, that single fleeting verse. I can still hear it. Stay clear of the southern shore, friend. It took every ounce of my strength to resist. You saw him too, right? Dead people, just shambering about without a care in the world. Except when they do seem to care, that is, and start shuffling towards the water. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. This talk of an alluring voice is disturbingly familiar. As if... But that's impossible. They're all dead. Aren't they? Hmm, wonder what you're talking about. But history repeating. David is sweating profusely. But if they have returned, that would mean... Oh, beg your pardon. I was just, um, thinking about something. Which reminds me, I received word that Master Mimi Moda would be arriving any moment. Apparently he grew frustrated waiting for the sweet young lass with skin as soft as Phoenix down to return. Which I'm assuming is you. I don't know what sort of arrangement you had, but you should probably go and explain yourself. <laughs> Sweet young lads with skin as soft as a phoenix down. I didn't know phoenix down were soft, but hey. Sorry, buddy, I'm flattered, but I don't think I'm your type. What's been keeping you initiate? I ain't getting any younger, you know? Hey, some honey-voiced harlot's been calling out to the folk that wander near the ship's graveyard, and it's stirring up the dead and all? Bloody hells, this takes me back to the days as a cannon boy sailing under old Miss Beard. They wouldn't dare, would they? Not after the lesson we learned them last time. Bah, they're bloody wood, though, wouldn't they? Brazen old beardies. Ugh, some folks say that the first purge would be the last, but I knew, knew deep down in me bones that this day would come. And come it has. I, I bet me bum ears of sirens behind all this. Nay, not one of these sanguine variety initiate. I speak of the other kind. Them that's got feathers and lure sailors to a watery grave with their sweet, sweet song. Ah, but it don't end there. No drowning's just the start. See, even in death, a man stays bound to the beast, forced to do her bidden till his corpse can't do it no more. 
is a fate I wouldn't wish on me worst enemy, except maybe in drink, and I regret it later. Any road, tis up to us to stop this hellborn hussy before she takes another soul. Of course, we can't send you marching off to the water without these. The siren don't have no power over a man that can't hear her song. Tis lucky for you I carry a spare pair. And lucky for us both, I'm a superstitious old sod, eh? Well, she ain't coming to us, so we best head over to her. To the ship graveyard, in this shape. <laughs> well, he may be a bit of a lecture, but I kind of like this guy. At least his attitude about the whole thing. You know, people make fun of people who are superstitious. But the funny thing is, like, when something does happen, they're at least prepared for the worst. And then they have the last laugh, so that's kind of what's going to be waiting for us here. So we just gotta wait in hiding for the siren to come out and basically just try to put a stop to her before it's too late. So I see a little fire up ahead, so I'm guessing that's where we wait for him. If she passes near the shore, she sure to spy the campfire and come looking. Just a matter of waiting now. All right. I'm beginning to wonder if some sly bugger ain't spun us a yarn here. Quiet, you hear that? Tis her! Look! Out over the water! She's come, Nishiet! She's come! Quick, lads! Shove them plugs in your ears and get ready for a fight! Soon as she realizes you're deaf to her diddle, she'll call on her thralls, and we'll be up to our necks and corpses before we know it! Reward. It's not really a song. It's just singing random words. Distress, distress, why? Thou not to relent, regret forever alone. My love, oh river, one look, soul shiver, 
No. No more dark eclipse, the heart. Eh, am I all right? Ha, ah, I'm better than that, Nishay. Happy as a sailor in a whorehouse I am. Of course, I'd be happy as a sailor with two what's-its if we gutted the songstress, but you can't have everything, can you? She'll not come crooning around here again, though. Not for a while, any road. And if she does, well, we know what to do, don't we? Thanks for the help, uh... Fuck me, I have clean forgot your name. Remind me. Claire? Don't reckon having no this shit by that name. But if you're not me old mate or... What's name? Why you been so bloody helpful? Ah, never mind. Be seeing ya, lassie. Man, that was actually kind of fun singing the part with the siren. It's, I'm not really much of a singer, I don't know if you could tell, but I did my best there. I thought it sounded pretty good anyway. I'm no siren, but hey, you just gotta make do with it, huh? You mean it was a siren? But how were you able to resist her song? I see. I heard that Master Mimi Oda was involved in the first purge, but I never actually... Hmm. I haven't survived an ordeal like that. I can't blame him for carrying earplugs around with them. Anyway, I have something for you. The corrupted crystal you wanted. Safely sealed within the pots, just as you requested. Please take it with my compliments. Okay, let's head on back then. So hopefully this will be the one that we need. I highly doubt it. it's you! Welcome back, Claire. You're looking remarkably hale, I must say, and more importantly, alive. You are alive, aren't you? Can't tell if you're being sarcastic or if you're sounding disappointed, but yes, we are definitely alive. Aha! The conquering hero returns, bearing a gift. Might I have a closer look? Impressive! Very impressive indeed. Yes, I think you'll be quite pleased with this specimen. Congratulations, Claire! Seldom if I ever have encountered a corrupted crystal composed of such a voluntary overabundance of fire aspected ether. What? You wanted a corrupted crystal composed of ice aspected ether to counteract the effects of a raging wind? Uh, <laughs> well, this specimen won't help you there. Anyone who knows anything about the elements could tell you that. You just have to keep looking, I suppose. Oh, typical. All right, the curious case of giddity. Don't fret now, I know exactly where to find a corrupted crystal comprised of ice aspected ether. An associate of mine in Gridania has been studying the effects of one such crystal on living things. Eh? What's with that expression? I thought you would be pleased to hear this news. This is not another wild dodo chase, I assure you. And what's even better is that this time you need to use the watered pot of yours to protect yourself from the crystal's energies. Hazling's fighting suggests that it's quite safe. Why, you ask? Well, let's just say that it has undergone a unique process that has rendered such precautions unnecessary. 
Anyway, don't let me keep you. It's been a pleasure, Claire. Come back and see me sometime, alright? Alright, so heading back to Gridania. There was really no need for us to go anywhere, really. At least we don't need to worry about going back so far, like once we finally do get the stupid crystal. Yeah, I came out a little too far. Here we go. Greetings and salutations. Miss Faye, I presume? Sienna informed me of your adventures in Aleport. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Though as Professor Lambertine is fond of saying, no action taken in the name of science is ever truly wasteful. To the matter at hand, corrupted crystals possessing the properties you seek could be found in abundance at the standing courses following the calamity. Alas, that is no longer the case, and while there is at least one suitable crystal that remains to be found within the Twelve's Wood, precisely where it is at any given moment is more difficult to say. Permit me to explain. You are familiar with Spriggans, yes? Furry little rascals that are wont to seek out ores and other stones? Well, one such creature with an infamously insatiable appetite has single-handedly devoured every corrupted crystal in the Twelve's Wood. Fortunately for you, these crystals take an eternity to digest, assuming they can even be digested, and I am reasonably confident that one still resides within his gut. It's quite fascinating, really. My theory is that this Gigidi first consumed a corrupted crystal when... <sighs> you couldn't care less about all this, could you? To the point, then. Gigidi has grown so ravenous that even his fellow Spriggans now fear for their safety. Some has gone so far as to petition the other inhabitants of the Twelve's Wood for succor. In fact, the other day I heard that a Spriggan has been spotted in the vicinity of Little Solace. I propose that you find this wayward creature and use him to track down and slay Giggity. I can think of no better method to locate this rampaging beast, can you? Well, if you insist, you're lucky that we're friends with the Sylphs. This one is pleased to see walking one. Has time come for this one to wreak furious vengeance upon imperial ones? Oh, so walking one seeks furry ones? This one just saw furry one wandering about. Was very worried for furry one. Worried for furry one's safety. Huh, I wonder why. Of sylphs and spriggans. Pomuxio fears that the wayward spriggan may be in danger. Furry one came to little solace in search of helpful ones. Ask these ones for aid and succor. 
These ones could not do what Furry One asked, so Furry One went elsewhere, went north into Lark's Call. This one tried to warn Furry One, but Furry One would not listen. Many vile ones lurked to the north, and touched ones too. Friendly One walks like walking one, but Friendly One's heart is one with these ones. Friendly One will forever have a home in Little Solace. Chosen One, Noraxia, this one, all ones watch over Friendly One. That peace and happiness will follow wherever Friendly One goes. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, there he is. How do we get up there? Oh, I did not know we could climb up here. If I did know, I just forgot. Well, this is interesting. We have to actually fight, like, right up here. Okay, so the Spriggan's name is Tick. Hurry up and die. Tiki great self, self bad self. Friend say Tiki. Friend. Tiki go back. That's a good self. Oh, that was fast. Tiggity hungry, always hungry, hungry. Tiggy run far, far away, away. Walking one is ever most helpful one. Furry one Tiggy spoke highly of walking one's bravery. But this one wonders why walking one first sought to find furry ones. Walking one seeks furry one, Giggity. Even these ones have heard tell of hungry one. Furry one Tiggity asked these ones to hunt Hungry One, but these ones have not means to do so. Furry one craves ords, yes, but Hungry One is clever, clever and cautious. If Walking One wishes to catch Hungry One, Walking One must needs use very rare, very special ore. This one knows little and less of ore, but Walking One, Menorwin at Sanctum of Twelve knows much. Walking One should seek aid of Goldsmithing One. Alright, so the Sanctum is actually up this way, if I recall correctly. And that's where they are holding like all those marriages and anniversaries. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and skip a little bit because this video is starting to feel really long. And as soon as we get the right crystal, then I think I'll just call it there. Okay, here we are. So I did cut a little bit ahead. So this here is, I mean, I don't want to say it's a church. I guess it's kind of like a church. Maybe, kind of, I don't know. Um, but this is where they hold like the bonding ceremony. So it's, for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a temple. I guess we could call it that. Yes, what is it? Ah, so you wish to learn about that rampaging spriggan with the rare ore. Hmm, I have an idea, although it is a bit unorthodox and convoluted. Okay, crazy enough to work. Mayor Wen has hatched a ridiculous plan to ensnare the dastardly Giggity. A church golem was recently sighted near the gates of the Sylphlands. Who created it and why it was left free to roam is anyone's guess. In any case, the construct's presence is profoundly serendipitous, for the soul stone of a chert golem is created by enhancing a chunk of true heart ore. True heart, in case you were unaware, is an exceedingly rare ore, one which Giggity has almost certainly never tasted, and will therefore be unable to resist. So all you need to do is search for the golem, slay it, claim its heart, and use it to bait the spriggan. Oh, and do remember to rub the soul stone against a sufficiently large concentration of amber. Say, amber scale rock in the central shroud. 
short of petitioning a mage verse in Golem Magics, that is the only way I know to dispel the enhancements woven into a true heart. Eh? Why are you looking at me like that? I had relations with a thaumaturge once, if you must know. So it's actually pretty easy to get to the Sylph lands from here as well, once we reach the exit. Okay, here we go. So this is Lark's Calling right in here. This is home to the Sylphs. At least it was until the Tempered Ones kind of took over. You can still kind of see like the traces of like tree houses and all that. So I'm guessing that this suffered a lot of damage due to the Calamity as well. So, it's got to be here. Okay. Now we just wait here for the golem to come. There it is! less thing to worry about. Now we have to head out to... What was it again? Central Shroud. Okay, so we'll just do a quick teleportation. I'm trying to remember where Amberscale Rock is. Okay, so it's right outside the manor. Okay, there we go. Oh, look! Tiki follow friend, friend, friend. Good, Tiki. Okay, so Amber Scale Rock. Use this. Okay. Or shiny ore. Or 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 tiki ore. Ah, giggity ore. Friend stop giggity. Giggity giggity giggity. Giggity is home. Tiggy is afraid. Friend come home. Friend stop giggity.
Oh, you heard the Spriggum. Okay, so their home, if I recall correctly, is right across here, but there's a chasm in the way, so we'll have to take the bridge. But you could see all the Spriggans wandering about. around here. Pretty sure this is the right place. Oh, there we go. Oh man, look at the golem. I did not notice that. Crystal Bearer. Oh, he looks so mean for such a cute, fluffy, rabbit-like spriggan. I don't know what they are. So I think that we can just head right straight to the gates and just enter the city through there. So as soon as we turn this quest in, I think that we'll call it there. I'm getting really tired, so. Okay, but the next quest should be us heading straight towards the Tempest and taking on Garuda, if I remember correctly. Yay, we can enter. It shouldn't be far from here either. Pray do not sneak up on me like that. I was engrossed in... Wait, what is that? Oh, what is that god's awful smell? Corrupted crystal. This particular sample happens to be covered in spriggan offal. My word, this is a breathtakingly beautiful crystal. I see my supposition was not mistaken. Ah, and I also see you weren't advised to dig in through spriggan entails for your prize. We owe our furry friend a debt of gratitude, you know. This thick coating of digestive juices is protecting us from the harmful energies of the crystal, just as the warded pot you once used did. Why so glum, friend? You finally obtained the corrupted crystal you sought, one overflowing with earth aspected ether. Calm down, I just, I just. It is comprised of ice aspected ether. Worry not. 
I suppose that joke was in poor taste considering your previous two attempts were for naught. Yeah, that was not funny. Anyway, that looks like the next quest is better late than never. Alright everyone, thank you all so much for watching. I know that this video was particularly long, but at least we managed to get all of that out of the way. And we are now getting ready to head straight off into the Tempest. So until next time everyone, I do hope you have a good rest of your day and are looking forward to our little adventure because it looks like it's slowly but surely starting to come to an end, at least for A Realm Reborn. So until next time, bye bye.